Okay, let's start this out by getting our registrar, our domain name. So I'm going to namecheap.com. Uh, I highly recommend them. They're just fantastic all the way across. I already have an account and some names. So this domain name is actually expiring. I'm no longer going to use it. It's uh, eosdfw.com. Uh, we're going to go ahead and use that today. So let's go ahead and manage this domain. From here, uh, let's see, go to advanced DNS. And we're gonna go ahead and point one of these things. Right now it's at a parking page, but let's go ahead and change this. So we have the couple text records and a DMARC. This is mainly for uh, email and things of that nature. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and leave this URL redirect in. Uh, it just goes ahead and redirects everything to this address. So this is what we need to change. And we're gonna change this to an A record. And we're gonna change this to our actual uh, domain. So this value, will actually be an IP address. Uh, we need to get our IP address from UpCloud, which if you're interested and you wanna follow along, click on the link below, you get seven days extended from their regular offer, and then you also get like a $25 credit, so you could easily go ahead and try this out for a month or two, see if it's for you or not. So you sign in using that link, get to this page and you're ready to deploy a server. So let's go ahead and deploy our server. Again, I just went to upcloud.com and signed in. We'll go ahead and pick our location. I'm in the United States. We have Chicago, and then we also have uh, San Jose, or uh, one of the, I think this is actually California. So I'm gonna go ahead and do Chicago because I'm Midwest time zone. Chicago makes sense for me. Uh, I'm in Dallas though, so I mean, it's kind of equal distance to either one. Should be good. As far as the plan, I'm just gonna go with the simple $5 a month, one core, one gig of memory, 25 gigs of storage. Uh, is pretty good. So we'll go ahead and do that. As far as storage, 25 gigs is plenty. Operating system, we're going to go ahead and choose Ubuntu 18.04, just for simplicity's sake. The uh, reason why I recommend Ubuntu server is mainly because a lot of guides online, let's say you deviate a little bit or want to install something, a lot of things are written specifically with Ubuntu server in mind. Uh, and 1804 has a nice little quick start guide as well when it comes to installing your LAMP stack, which LAMP stack is Linux, Apache, MySQL, and PHP LAMP for short. So with that, we'll launch this server. IPv6 support, um, yeah, go ahead and leave that enabled. So with all that, uh, we have our host name, description, um, and we're ready to actually build this thing. So we'll, let's go ahead and deploy it and we see it's deploying. So this will take usually a couple minutes to do, but so why this is actually deploying and being made, uh, we're gonna go ahead and copy our IP address. Right here is the IP address. We're gonna copy this to the clipboard, come back into here. You see how we were waiting on our IP address? We need to put it right here. So now everything, anytime you go to eosdfw.com, it would come to this IP address, which in turn would go to your up cloud server that you just made. So we'll go ahead and check this. TTL is how often it checks in with your any updates you do. So anytime I hit update here and with a TTL of 30 minutes, it would wait 30 minutes and then check to see if it changed. So you can't change this address all the time and then just have it reflected all over the world real time. It would take 30 minutes to propagate across the interwebs. So good to know. Uh, with all this, we're pretty much done with this section. Now there's some other stuff you can do for email forwarding. If you have a professional domain and you want to email through it, uh, that's definitely a video for another day. I highly recommend doing that or at the very least doing like a catch all and forwarding it to, uh, let's say a Gmail or something like that. And that way you can actually, uh, have a professional email address. So with this, we're going to go ahead and close out of this guy and, uh, what we can do as this happens, we can actually ping www.eosdfw.com. And right now it already propagated that entire thing. And you can see it's hitting this up cloud host. So we know we've already established that that was really quick. Uh, so sometimes it takes a little bit longer than just a minute or two like this one did. But we're pretty much done with EOS DFW and it's pointing to our upcloud host. So we're done with the registrar point portion of this. Now, Namecheap itself, I didn't mention pricing. 
usually it's about 10 bucks for a dot com and that's per year so uh, pretty awesome i use them all the time so we have our actual server built we need to log into it and start deploying it okay so now we have deployed our server we have it up and going we have our domain eosdfw.com pointing to it everyone in the whole world can hit absolutely nothing right now because the server doesn't have anything on it so let's remote into the server from our dashboard and up cloud we're going to click on ubuntu um, from here we're going to go to firewall um, we're going to go ahead and add a rule for ssh Please note, do not leave this rule active as people will attack your server with SSH enabled. And if you have to leave SSH on, definitely set up tar pitting and other things. I have another email I'll link up here at the top or down in the description, uh, how to actually set up a firewall that's properly uh, protects you on SSH. Otherwise, you'll get uh, just attacked over and over. So source address, you could actually limit this down to your current IP address. That would also be a good way to limit attacks on SSH. Uh, protocol, it's going to be TCP. Uh, port is a single port. SSH port 22. We're going to go ahead and comment this as SSH. Accept. Save changes. So this is just a TCP port, port 22. It saves them. Now we can SSH into this server. Now you're probably thinking, what in the heck is our password? If you go to notifications, it says, hey, it's been password. It was deployed. Password is this NA4. So we're going to go ahead and copy this, close it out, and then we're going to go ahead and launch our terminal. So I'll go ahead and minimize this down, launch into terminal. Now, if you're on Windows, you might use PuTTY for this uh, type of thing. Uh, just for Linux, I have terminal so I can do it natively and have a lot of tab completion and cool stuff. So uh, we're going to go SSH root at... Uh, our domain we don't actually have to even do the ip because i know that this domain has already worked we already pinged it and it, it already has our server on there so we click yes it'll ask for a password we copied it from that notification we'll paste it in here and here we go so the first thing we do when we launch our server is do a sudo apt update uh, i'll go ahead and fast forward through all this or just cut it everyone's really seen this a million times uh, update, upgrade, and then a reboot. We like to go ahead and get all the packages, everything uh, freshened up when you first install a server. Uh, everyone does this every time. Uh, there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. So with this, let's go ahead. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and let this sit, and I'll go ahead and cut this out. Okay, it says there's upgradable packages, so now we just do sudo apt upgrade. Go ahead and do this upgrade. This goes ahead and cleans out all the other stuff that needs to be upgraded from this, and we should be good. Okay, now that we've upgraded our server, let's go ahead and give it a reboot, and we'll go ahead and let that reboot happen. These typically take a couple a couple minutes usually, or, or about a minute. We're gonna go ahead and give it just uh, 60 seconds and then try and re-log in. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and try to get back in here. So there we go, we've logged back in, it's just rebooted. So uh, with this, let's go ahead and attempt to install our LAMP stack. We'll go ahead and do task SEL. We're already root super users, so we don't actually need to do sudo before this. Install, and then we'll do LAMP-server. This will go ahead, go out to the internet, retrieve all the files for our LAMP stack, and then install it on our VPS. Okay, so now that the LAMP stack is now installed, we'll first check to make sure Apache's up and going. I like to do this by just opening up a web page and then just pulling up our actual address. So we're going to go eosdfw.com. And you'll see the default Apache to Ubuntu page. So everything's up and going. Everything looks good. Uh, now I think we're ready to install WordPress. Now, I usually just, you can go ahead and follow these basic instructions from WordPress. I highly recommend just kind of going through and doing exactly as they say here. So we'll create a database in WordPress uh, using MySQL usually is, is what we're doing, or MyriadDB is actually MySQL. It's just a uh, open source fork of MySQL after Oracle took over. So uh, both are pretty much the same product. So with that, uh, we'll go into here. We'll secure MySQL by going uh, MySQL underscore secure underscore installation. 
So what this does is it's going to secure our MySQL installation. So we'll go ahead and say valid password pro plugin. This makes sure it checks the strength of your plugin. You typically want to say yes to this. Uh, however, I'm not going to actually do this because I kind of like using weak passwords and I'm going to just delete this site after I'm finished. So we'll go ahead and set our password. Remove anonymous users. You want to say yes. Disable root login remotely. Uh, yes. You, you don't want anybody using MySQL uh, remotely. Uh, now, if you're constantly doing database edits and stuff like that, you probably should go ahead and use like PHP MyAdmin and then create another user other than root. So we'll go ahead, disable root remotely, remove test database, yes. Reload privilege tables, yes. With all that, our MySQL is now set up and ready to go. Okay, from our root directory in HTML, we need to go out and download our WordPress. So we'll just do wget https forward slash wordpress.org forward slash latest dot tar dot gz. This address hasn't changed in forever. I love their actual naming scheme for WordPress. You just go out and grab it and you're done. So from here, we'll look, we got the latest. We'll go ahead and extract this with tar dash extract verbose file latest so xvf it goes ahead extracts all that to our directory and if we look uh if we go into wordpress this is our whole install now we don't want it to be wordpress because then you'd have to go eos dfw.com forward slash wordpress and that would be the root we want that actually to be on the main meat and potatoes of our site so we'll go back to our main directory i'll go ahead and clear our screen and then we're going to extract WordPress so or move all that WordPress to this directory. So to do this, we'll move WordPress star dot. Dot means this directory. So it goes into the WordPress directory, says grab everything, and put it in this directory. So if we did that right, we'll do our listing, and we have everything here now. So we can go ahead and remove latest. And then we'll go into WordPress. This should be an empty directory. It is. And we'll go ahead and remove WordPress. Uh, we need a recursive force. All right. So with WordPress good, now we got to go ahead and write out our WP config. So we're going to go ahead and nano WP config. And this is stuff we need to change. So we actually need to set up our database, our username, our password, which we haven't done yet. So let's go ahead and do that. So to log in and create our database, we're going to have to go MySQL user root dash password. It'll say enter your password. You'll enter your password for root, and now you're at the MySQL prompt. From here, we can just simply uh, go ahead and create our database and our user as well. So we'll grant all privileges and our user at local hosts. Now, I put WP user, you can put uh, whatever username you want, but mine's going to be named WP user. Identified by, and then this is where you need to have a good password. So you need to like a cap, like strong password, something like that. So you have a cap, a lowercase, that. Uh, the reason why you want a strong password for this user is mainly because uh, this type of thing, uh, you remember that earlier prompt when we secured MySQL? If we put a weak password, it just will reject it and say, hey, that's not a valid user. So you want to put something really secure here. And honestly, I would even go a step further than this and make it completely nonsensical, just a password generator, because you're only going to be using it this one time. So with that, we'll go ahead and hit enter. This creates this user. Uh, actually, we forgot our semicolon at the end. All right, so query OK, it went ahead and did all that. So now we need to actually create the database. We've created our user, and it has all privileges. So uh, to create a database, we just go create database, and we're going to call this one WP data. And don't forget the semicolon, and we're good. So with our database created and our user created, now we can go ahead and hit exit. It goes ahead and exits that, and now we can actually do our configuration of WP or WordPress. So we're going to go nano WP config sample, 
And now we're gonna actually configure this. Our database name is gonna be WP Data. Here is our username, which is WP User. Our password is our super strong password. Strong password. Local host and all this is good. Um, don't change collate. Some people do that. And I think that's just silly. So next we need to get our salt. So this is kind of an important thing. Like, uh, they make it really easy just using the link here. So what I like to do is go here and hold control and just boom, knock those lines out and then go ahead and open this link right here. So with that link open, we can just take all of this, copy it, come back to our actual console. We'll exit out our bad copy paste and then we just paste it in. So this is a good way to fill out all of this data without having to mess around too much, uh, which is really nice. So we have all that table prefix. You can leave that at WP um, and we can just go ahead, write this out. Now this is the sample file. So we want to remove sample and just put WP yes. And then we'll go control X and we're done. So to write a file out in nano, remember control O, remove that sample name and then control X to exit out. So from here, We've pretty much uh, got this going. Let's go ahead and check our WordPress file and see what how we're doing. Uh, we upload files, we got it all going, and now the thing can actually be ran. So uh, we should be good. Uh, that was not following those instructions at all, but oh well. So we're gonna go EOS DFW. And now we have our WordPress installation we can do. We'll just say EOS DFW, uh, WP user, <laughs> it, you can put whatever. So you can put test, make it that, sure. Uh, we'll make it a really awesome email. And then uh, install WordPress. And from here, we can go ahead and log in, log in. And we have our WordPress ready to customize. And if we look at the site, you can actually look you have your basic WordPress site and you're ready to customize. So this is building a WordPress site start to finish, getting your domain, doing the DNS entries, putting your VPS server up and going. I used UpCloud. You can use other uh, ones as well. Everyone has a little bit different setup when it comes to VPS server. So uh, if you want to do Google Cloud Platform, you can do that on a prior video. I did that. And then at the end here, we have our site. So this is really easy, really kind of straightforward. But if you have any questions, let me know in the comment section down below. So there you have it, start to finish website creation. I hope this helps a lot of people or demystifies a lot of things because uh, it's one of those tricky subjects because it's so hard to show a lot of this stuff because it's like a one-time setup kind of deal. And for this video, I just kind of want to go ahead and get in here and show them. But as far as the only thing I didn't show was account creation. These are very easy to actually go ahead and create accounts for, so don't feel like it's hard. So let me know in the comments section what you thought of this video. I know a lot of people have been asking me to remake this video so you can go ahead and host your own website while also buying your own domain name. This is extremely powerful. One thing I didn't cover in this one is actual email hosting. In Namecheap, you can actually forward a lot of your email to like let's say a Gmail address or what other email address you're actually using. Like on my website, ChrisTitus.com, you can put, go ahead and make like, let's say contact at christitis.com. And then you can make that your primary email. And that way people can email you, you can email out of it and have that professional look and feel because someone's going to take me a heck of a lot more serious when I have my own domain and I'm emailing from them, from from it to them. And then also, uh, you don't uh, have a lot of the unprofessionalism that you see all the time. I get it through a whole variety of things when it comes to YouTube, where you know, you'll get hot chick 69, go ahead and send you an email saying, Hey, I want you to review my product. And I'm like, Nope, definitely not looking at that. <laughs> so <laughs> uh, it's very important when you're doing a business of any sort, have a custom domain, at least for email, and then slap up a website. It's dang near free. It's super cheap. It's worth doing, and you'll be so much better off for it. It's far more professional to do it this way.
But with all that said, a big shout out to all my patrons. Without you, I couldn't do this. And I'll see you in the next video.